Hello everyone, welcome back. So today uh, we continue talking about chapter six, which is on determinants. So the t today I will uh, introduce you a definition about uh, the cofactor expansion along a, a row or a column. Okay, so let me quickly remind you what was the cofactor corresponding to an entry. Okay, so we had C i j equals minus one i plus j times d minor i j. And the minor was indeed a number which can be computed uh, from removing the i throw and j column of the given matrix, the square matrix, and then computing the determinant of the new smaller matrix. Anyways, we will see an example, and then that will be a reminder for you. So let's start with remark, with this remark. Uh, let A be an n by n matrix with entries AIJ. The sign of negative 1 i plus j, which is indeed this guy, right here. So the, so the sign of this uh, can be obtained from the following matrix. Okay, so let i be 1. So for example, we're here. Let j be also 1. Then what is i plus j? You get 2. And then negative 1 is squared becomes plus 1. That's why we have this plus here. And if you let i1 but j2, let's go to the second column. Then if i is 1, j is 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, and negative 1 cubed gives you negative 1. So this one is minus. So if you walk in a row or column consecutively, the sign will get changed, the sign of negative i plus j. This is just to help you to quickly see that uh, value, negative 1, i plus j, the sign of that, without computing or thinking about uh, uh, the computation. Okay, uh, so what we have is cij is indeed same as mij if i plus j is even, because you get negative 1 on top, an even number, and it's minus mij if i plus j is odd. Okay. Definition 6.1.4. Cofactor expansion. Let A be an n by n matrix. The cofactor expansion along the ith row. So be careful that we talk about the cofactor expansion, but we have to specify along which row in this definition. So we can talk about the cofactor expansion along the first row. We can compute the cofactor expansion along the second row and keep going. We can compute the cofactor expansion along the nth row, last row. How do we compute this uh, cofactor expansion along the given row? So this is what we do. Assume that this is the i row. So what we do is we look at the first entry and then we compute the corresponding cofactor. Okay, we have this cofactor right here. We compute that corresponding cofactor. And then we do the same with all the entries in this row. For example, the last one, the last entry in the i row, we compute the corresponding cofactor. And then what we do is we multiply each entry to its corresponding cofactor, okay? So we multiply each entry with the corresponding cofactor, and then we add them up. That's called the cofactor expansion along the i throw. I would like to put the sigma notation for this. Uh, so we have a, i, you see, in all of them you have i, but the second number in the index gets changed. So I would like to put T. 
So we have this, and t starts from 1 all the way to n. Okay? Now we have a similar definition, which is the cofactor expansion along the jth column. Now we talk about cofactor expansion, but in a given column. Okay? So, similar to what we had before for the rows, let's say this is the jth column. Now what we do is we look at, we look at the, let's say, the first entry in this column, and we compute the corresponding cofactor. And then we do the same with all the entries. Let's say last one, we compute the corresponding cofactor, okay? All of them. And then we multiply each entry to its corresponding cofactor, like the here. Yes, and then you add them. Okay? So don't worry, when I do an example, you will understand it much better. So in sigma notation, what we have is we have a, you see these numbers, the first numbers in the index are getting changed. That's why I put a variable for that. I put it, let's say r, and same story for the cofactor, the rj cofactor, and then r starts from one to n. Great, let's do an example, okay? Evaluate the cofactor expansion along each row, okay? And each column, okay? We have to compute along each row, each column, okay, separately. Let's compute it along the first row, first row. Okay, by the definition, what I have to do is I have to put the entry A11. I would like to highlight the first row, the first row right here in the matrix. Okay, now uh, A11 and then times 11 cofactor and then A12 times 1, 2 cofactor. Good. What is A11? Just the entry is 1. And then C11. If you remember, the definition of C11 was negative 1, 1 plus 1, the minor 1, 1. And A12 is 4, the entry right here. And then times the definition, negative 1, 1 plus 2, the cofactor corresponding to A12, which is negative one, one plus two, M12. Okay. Which is same as, okay, negative one is squared, is positive. One times plus one is one. So you have to just compute M11. So what is M11? It's the determinant you just write the matrix, but you have to remove the, uh, because of one here and one here, the first row and the first column, okay, plus. So you see here, we have uh, negative one, one plus two, so this guy here, gives you negative one times four is negative four. And then the determinant again, one here, four here, negative one here and two here. And then we have to remove which row, which column, first row, second column, first row, second column. What do we end up with? We end up with determinant of two minus four times determinant of negative one. And the answer is just six. Okay, that's the way we calculate the cofactor expansion along the first row. Now let's do the cofactor expansion along the second row. So for the second row, we have 
just just look at the second row. Let me highlight the second row now. This guy. So we have a second row one C two one plus a two two C two two. So a two one is minus one, and then you have negative one two plus one, and then you write the matrix. Okay, the determinant of the matrix, basically. Now we have to, again, remove a row and a column. Which one? You see, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, and 1. And then you have plus A, 2, 2, this, the entry in the second row and second column. So 2 times minus 1, 2 plus 2, the determinant of 1, 4, negative 1, 2. You have to remove the second row and second column. Second row, second column. Now, what do we end up with? Well, negative 1 times negative 1 is plus 1. Determinant of 4 is 4 plus 2 times. Negative 1 power 4 is positive, and the determinant of 1 is 1. So, 6. Okay. Now we have to compute the cofactor expansion along the first column now. We computed first row, second row. Now first column, second column. Okay, uh, let me copy the matrix here so that we use it. One, uh, four, minus one, two. Okay, now let's do it. First column. So for the first column, okay, again, you can just highlight the first column and don't write A11, B11. Just write the answer here. 1 times C11 minus 1 times C21. Instead of writing A11, A1, A21. And then I would like to quickly calculate the sign of that negative 1, I plus J. So what I do is, uh, if you remember from what we had uh, right here, we can look at this matrix for determining the sign of minus 1 on top I plus J. So here we had plus. And then here we had minus, and the one below is minus, and the one here is plus. That's why, because we're talking about the first column. So we had 1 times plus 1 times M11. Minus 1 times, and then look at the first column, but second row, basically. You have minus 1 times M21. And if you compute that, you get 1 times 1. Forget it. Just copy the first copy the matrix and put the term in it. And then, again, you can quickly see which row, which column you should remove. Okay? It's not hard. I want to give you another way of looking at this. So, we know that I'm talking about M11. M11 corresponds to A11. This is A11. Just remove the row which has this purple highlighted one. Okay, I remove. Remove the column which contains that highlighted purple one here. That's it. Okay. Now you have minus one times here. Minus one times minus one. So the answer is plus one times. Put the determinant of the whole matrix. Again, I would like to see what to remove. Okay. But M21 corresponds to the A21. A21 is second row, first column, this guy. Now, just remove the row which contains that. Remove the column which contains that. And then the answer is determinant of 2 plus determinant of 4. Be careful. This is not absolute value. It's just determinant. You get 6. Okay. And then second column. So... We do, for the second column, we do 4 times C21 
at 1, 2 plus 2 times C, 2, 2. And that is, I just applied the sign. 4 times minus 1, the determinant of, you can quickly remove 1, 2, 1, 2 here. Yes. And then plus twice, look at the sign right here. Okay. The sign is plus 1. Then put the determinant of the whole matrix, and then you have to remove to compute the minor. You have to remove the second and the second. Then what is the answer? The answer is 4 times minus 1 times determinant of minus 1. You get 4 times minus 1 times minus 1, so 4. And then this is 2 times 1 times 1 plus 2, 6. Okay, now let's observe uh, an interesting basically a uh, fact here. Look at this result. Look at this result. And these two. All are six. Okay. Is this by chance? The answer is no. We'll see later as a theorem that for a given square matrix, when you compute the cofactor expansion along each row, and each column, they're all equal. Their answer will be the same. Okay, that's enough for today. Uh, we will continue in the next video.